Boston becoming the latest big city to explore paying reparations to African-Americans as activists from coast to coast push for governments to hand out millions to minority groups for actions they say led to a lack of opportunity and displacement of families. So why is this movement seemingly regaining steam? Let's bring in Vivek Ramaswamy, founder of Strive Asset Management. Good to see you in the studio. This is the first chance we actually had to shake hands with each Finally. other. Yes. Overdue. Good to see you. So Michelle Wu, who is the mayor of Boston, has struck a 10-member panel, which includes two high school students and a college student who was a BLM activist to be on this panel to decide whether or not there should be reparations uh, for uh, the past uh, there in the state of Massachusetts and how much that should be. Uh, what do you think of this panel itself and the idea of reparations in the state of Massachusetts? Look, I think there was a time and place for reparations back in 1870, right after the Civil War ended. That moment has passed. And now if we keep on looking backward, I don't think we're going to find a way to move forward as a country, John. And if you think about it, there's going to be all kinds of implementation issues. Who counts as black? You're going to have a lot of people who claim to be black, who in the strict sense really ought not have been included in this program. Even the kids of immigrants who came over in the 60s or 70s. But even if you put the implementation issues aside, what does this really do? It creates an incentive structure for people to compete to be a victim. What about Japanese Americans whose parents or grandparents were in internment camps, Jewish Americans who have experienced discrimination? We get into this victimhood Olympics and there is no gold medalist in America's victimhood Olympics. There is only one loser in the end, and that is America. And that's where this discussion takes us is looking backward instead of looking forward, which is where we need to go. You know, when you take a look at the history of Massachusetts, it was a slave state from 1640 to 1783. They're also looking at reparations in San Francisco. People will say, well, wait a second. California entered the, the nation in 1850 as a free state. There was no slavery in the state of California, but there was prior to it becoming a state, both African-Americans and Native Americans. So so what's the right solution here? I think the right solution is actually equal opportunity going forward in this country. In fact, I worry that what we're creating is a new form of psychological slavery today, teaching kids that they cannot get ahead in this country because of the color of their skin. I think we got to embrace Martin Luther King's message that you do get ahead in America, not on the color of your skin, but on the content of your character. And when you teach kids to think of themselves as victims, that's when they actually behave like victims and leave themselves even worse off. It's no accident that African-Americans in this country are economically in many places worse off today than they were even decades ago as a consequence of policies that were supposed to help black Americans. Now making it explicitly tied to race isn't going to help things. Now, in 